Now we can consider some resonance structures. And so this happens when you have something like ozone. So if you draw the Lewis structure of ozone, you get something like this. And you know that's one, that's one structure you can draw. And then you could also have put the double bond on the other side. And so you have these two different structures. And when you find, when you calculate the formal charges, you get the same set of formal charges. So what structure is right? Well, actually, it turns out neither of them are right. Um, so if you look at what the structure really looks like, so just the, you know, following all the rules, we would have a double bond here and a single bond here, or maybe a double bond there and a single bond there. So it's not that this double. Sometimes this is a double bond. Sometimes this one's a single bond. Sometimes they switch. So this, this neither of these are a good representation of what the real molecule looks like. And so when you do the experiment, you can calculate the bond distances and you can calculate charges on these oxygens, and they don't match this model at all. This is like a limitation to the model. Um, the bond distances are the same in the real molecule. They're both, you know, a, a little bit shorter than a single bond. So it's worth noting at this point that double bonds are shorter than single bonds and triple bonds are shorter than, than both of those. And so if you're just looking at the length of, um, of bonds, just for a second here, so a, a, a single bond, if a single bond is that long, sorry, the single bond is that long, double bond would be about this long and then a triple bond would be about that long so the as you increase um, how many bonds you have there the distance de decreases and so when you look at the real molecule of ozone you don't really have a, a sometimes you have a single bond and sometimes you have a double bond you actually have two bonds that are exactly the same and they're somewhere between a single and a double and so you can't really express that with just one resonance structure so the real structure looks like a hybrid of both of these so just like when you see green, when you have the color green, it's not sometimes it's blue and sometimes it's yellow. It's always a perfect mixture of both of those colors. The same idea with these resonance structures. So just representing one by itself doesn't look doesn't represent the whole picture. You have to show both of these resonance structures. Um, it's like a hybrid of the of the two of these. You'll see this a lot in organic chemistry. So if you're uh, so look over this chapter again when, before you get to organic. So you can have a double bond here and a single bond there, or a double and a single. The real bond, uh, those, those electrons are not actually localized. They're not located in between that carbon and oxygen. They're actually delocalized between both of those spaces. So this real structure does not have a double bond here and a single bond here, and sometimes it switches. They always have like a one and a half bond in between here. So let's do it. Let's try an example of, um, let's try to answer this question. So if you have SO3 or SO32 minus, which one do you think is going to have shorter bonds? So draw the Lewis structures for both of these things. So pause the video for a second, draw these Lewis structures and see what you get. So SO3, well, I'm going to start with that one. SO3. There we go, SO3. So sulfur has six, oxygen has six, times three gives me 18, and six, you have 24. So sulfur, oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. I used up two, four, six. I have 18 left over, two, four, six. 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. I'm out of electrons, but sulfur's not happy, so I can take one of these and put a double bond there. I could do that three different times, so I'll get three different structures. I can have, I'll draw it up here, sulfur, double bond, or other resonance structures. Or the double bond could be on this side. And you can have all your dots in there. There, I added all the dots for you. Um, and you can see that, you know, you don't really have a single, two single bonds and a double bond. This double bond is actually um, delocalized. So you'll find it you know, kind of spread out between all those different oxygens. And so really what you end up with is uh, 
a single bond, but somewhere between a single and a double bond all the way around. It's like more like a, a one and a third bond. If, you can, if we were actually able to draw that, that's kind of how, what it would look like. So what happens when you have SO3 2 minus? So SO3 2 minus has, okay, sulfur has six and oxygen has six times three of those, gives me 18 and six, I have 24, but then I have a two minus charge, so I'm gonna add two more electrons. So I still set it up like this. I just used up six electrons, two, four, six. I have 20 left over, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. And so this one is all single bonds. And single bonds are longer than this guy up here, which is gonna have a single, um, a, you know, two singles and a double, which really works out to be like a one and a third bond. So these guys would have um, shorter bonds up here. These ones would be shorter because there's a little bit of double bond character in each one of those bonds. And just to reiterate one more time, a single bond is the, is the longest ones and then a double bond is shorter and then a triple bond would be the shortest bond. So if just looking at a yeah, single, double, triple. And you're gonna look at this when we do lab seven. Um, we're actually gonna draw these molecules in a, a uh, in Spartan, optimize the geometry, and then figure out what the bond distances are for a single, double, and a triple bond. Um, as far as resin structures are concerned, benzene, again, this is something you're gonna see a, a lot in organic chemistry. Um, benzene has you know six carbons in a ring, and they have alternating single and double bonds. So you can draw a resonance structure this way or this way. When you look at the experimental um, structure, when you look at the structure experimentally, you'll find that you don't actually have alternating single and double bonds. You actually have like one and a half length bonds all the way around. Uh, so you can draw it this way. This is a line structure formula. Dr. Rossi loves these. And basically at the intersection of every line is a carbon. And then you have as many hydrogens as you need to satisfy the octet rule. This is another way to represent benzene.